How is the war economy working for you? War is terrorism with a bigger budget. No flag is large enough to cover the shame of killing innocent people. Warning, study shows one in three million raped in the military, women raped in the military. These are American military. Right. Now. We are creating enemies faster than we can kill them. Veterans for Peace, Abolish War, The Last Campaign. And then uh, this one that says, and I actually read this during a public forum comment to the City Council, which went right over their heads, I'm sure, or they stuffed it somewhere in their back pocket because they didn't want to hear it. The money required to eradicate hunger for everyone in the world has been estimated at three, excuse me, 30 billion a year, about as much as the world spends on the military every eight days. So if we could just have an eight-day truce, we could feed the world, at least for that particular period of well, time. Well, if we'd all quit being afraid of each other, we wouldn't need militaries. Yeah. What is it people are so afraid of? It's not just fear, it's also power, uh, seeking power. You know, people saying, I, I just want a bigger piece of whatever the world pie is. Well, and it's money. Yeah. There's big Absolutely. money in wars. There's big money in the military keeping on as strong as it is. Now, I won't read this, but I want the public to do to read this. It's called Moral Corrosion of Drone Warfare, and it's written by our friend and co-peace activist Ray McGovern, who served as a um, CIA analyst, um, and he actually... Um, he had a really prestigious position. He gave the briefing to the president for a number of years. I forget how long a period it was, but a number of years. He wrote this article, and why this is important and why I'm tying this into the Camp Ripley protests that we're going to have here coming up in September of this year is because drone warfare, uh, our soldiers at Camp Ripley are complicit in the drone assassinations. They are now arming the the um the the shadow drones which Camp Ripley trains on and the Raven are both complicit in war crimes and I'll get into how that is and why that is later and so it's moral corrosion of drone warfare and it's consortium news okay. um and that leads into talking about the drone protests that I have called and uh, Camp uh, Brainerd Area Coalition for Peace is also calling for this action is going to be held this year this is from my blog um, I have a blog post about this and it's all over social media at this point and I've invited for this particular um, protest I've titled it um, Camp Ripley protest against warriorized cops slash war criminals slash drone killings and then of course war is also we always sort of like war. umbrella yeah right because and it's it's from on September 17th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and anybody's welcome even those that don't agree with what we have to say if you want to come and stand amongst us we're happy to have you there on our where, where we stand right in front of the main gate at Camp Ripley we're on public right of road right away right um, and it's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and that is going to be followed by, as always, a really nice potluck feed at the Bell Prairie Park. And we visit afterwards, and sometimes we have a speaker out there, but anybody's welcome to come. You don't even have to bring a food dish yeah, if you don't want to. Always plenty. We always have plenty of food. And um, so that's on September 17th from 10 to 2. There's also an event that day inside Camp Ripley Gates. It's their biannual Community Appreciation Day, which um, I know because I researched it, um, that is identified by the military as a recruitment retention day. Every two years, Camp Ripley hosts this big event to lure the children in, the local kids, to get them uh, de desensitized to the idea of uh, liking the military and possibly joining the military. And for those that are in the community that want to stay in the community, it's a retention uh, day where they feed them, and the kids are this year going to get to have a free Humvee ride if they want. And Ooh. it's pretty hard to resist. Do they still have that rock wall for the kids to climb on? Well, they probably yeah, will. They probably will. Camp Ripley has a uh, 
Uh, no, actually, it's not on Camp Ripley's website yet, I don't think. But ironically, the uh, Chamber of Commerce here in town has all the information about this uh, Community Appreciation Day uh, because the Chamber of Commerce, of course, likes to advertise what they feel is money-making ventures, and certainly the war machine is a money-making, the biggest money-making venture in the area. In the world. It's the largest, Excuse me, well, yeah, know. and in this area, it's the yeah. largest employer, over a thousand people um, are either in the military or are employed at, the, at Camp Ripley, so it's a big money-maker. But, okay, so I also have posted on here something that Colleen Rowley wrote, because it's important. I've asked Black Lives Matter group in the Twin Cities, Communities Against Police Brutality Group, Surge, which stands for Showing Up for Racial Justice, and other groups in the Minneapolis area to come and join us this year and connect the dots because riot control uh, is th the largest trainer of riot control and non-lethal weaponry that's being used against our own citizens on the street at protests and the uh, even the Native Americans and those who showed up at out in the Dakotas for the Standing Rock protest. Mm -hmm. The same equipment that was given by the military to our police and law enforcement agencies like the sheriff's departments and so on are now being used to turn around and use on our citizens. For crowd control. For crowd control. Riot control. Right. Um, and to connect the dots between what's happening with the slaughter of innocent people by our cops in numerous cities almost daily and the war machine and our full spectrum dominance and assistance throughout the world, they're all connected. It all falls under the same umbrella. And what Jeremiah Wright said years ago was absolutely spot on, dead on. He said that America's chickens have come home to roost. Boy, was he right. Yeah. And where are the preachers bold enough to say that now today? I'll tell you where they are. They're cowered into not talking and using the same free speech that he did in front of his constituents and, and his congregation, they all saw what happened to him, the demonization of him, yeah. and so that caused pastors to be even more silent on the horrifics of what our military is doing and being ordered to do. Well, and the point is that we don't, we, we as the people, don't necessarily need to wait for the clergy to tell us how to how to uh, live moral lives and part right. of living a moral life is to stand up against injustice wherever we see it. Right. So Colleen Rowley wrote, and this is on June 19th, as I've predicted wars, as I've long predicted, wars and terrorism are merely the flip sides of each other. Sure, they are on opposite sides of the power equation, but each serves only to ratchet up the other. A poor man's war is terrorism, while a rich man's terrorism, excuse me, while a rich man's terrorism is war. The U.S. NATO Israel's war on terrorism, which Americans were manipulated through high-level propaganda to believe, would only result in adverse consequences to others and not ever blow back on ourselves. Is, although it took some years, now increasingly migrating home, as some of the Republican representatives remarked who were shot at their baseball practice in Washington, D.C., violence begets violence. It spreads like disease. So these same D.C. politicians should realize that they are also... Uh, they are also... begetting the violence that is now boomeranging back not only on them, but on all people. And I, so I don't forget to talk about this because it's terribly important. I, and this is just me personally, but I've heard Colleen mention this as well, that the FBI, the CIA, Homeland Security, TSA, um, law enforcement agencies like the sheriff's departments all throughout the country, police departments all throughout the country, are permeated with veterans uh, who have come home with war, um, mental war damage, so yeah. to speak, PTSD and other it, things, yeah. and I believe rather trigger happy, and all because of veterans' preference. If you think about it, how is veterans' preference any more fair than if we gave preference to, say, firefighters, or people who served in the Peace Corps, or in America Corps, America 
AmeriCorps. So you're talking about veterans' preference in the in hiring, hiring in hiring for police. These work. law enforcement agencies, as I mentioned, Homeland Security, TSA, FBI, um, TSA, local sheriffs and police. The only group that's given preference out of all of lots of people who've served admirably in different organizations, the only ones given any kind of preference are veterans. Why? You know, well, it may be um, devil's advocate here. They might reply to that that they're trying to help veterans get good employment after they're, they're uh, come home because many of them are, they've missed a four-year period or a two-year period, however long the gap was, of career building. Yes, so they're so, two years behind their but peers. But so did people in the Peace Corps and America Corps. And America Corps. Well, I absolutely agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. It's a stunning slap in the face to everybody else who served our country honorably. In, in other, other than carrying a gun. Right. You're right. You're absolutely it's, right. It's terrific. And I really believe with all my heart that we have a problem today in this county and every county beyond throughout this entire nation because of veterans' preference and hiring. That's what's causing so many of our cops to be trigger-happy and warriorized and, and, and sort learned of, it on the battlefield and in all our training. Shoot first and ask questions later. Yep. There's a good deal of that going on, and it doesn't belong in a police force. Maybe in combat, but not not when you're dealing with civilians as a as service and protection. Right. All right. No. From there, um, I just want to mention quickly. There was an article in the Brainerd Dispatch recently, and I don't know if our official city and county newspaper, the Morrison County Record, um, is going to print about this, but Camp Ripley investigates after private property owner finds training round. What is a training round? A bullet. Okay. Or some kind of a weaponry. Okay. It says the Camp Ripley Training Center is conducting a comprehensive investigation. So they're investigating themselves, which shouldn't be. It no. should be an outside investigation. Absolutely into the discovery of a training round found this weekend on private property in the Fort Ripley Township. So how did a training round get on private property? That should trouble everybody because yeah, it, it could have killed somebody. Yeah, absolutely. Investigating officials will determine whether it was a firing error or if a munition malfunction occurred A news release stated. There were no injuries as a result of this event. Thank God. The the size and nature of the training round was unavailable Monday as the investigation continued. Sergeant, uh, Staff Sergeant Anthony Housie of the Camp Ripley Public Affairs Office said there was only one training round found by the landowner. Housie said details are still being investigated such as where, when the round was fired and what happened after it was fired. Housie said the round was fired sometime over the weekend and there are several units currently training on the Camp Ripley base. Fort Ripley Township borders Camp Ripley property. Housie said this type of occurrence is rare. He said Camp Ripley will report the findings of the investigation once complete. The Crow Wing County Sheriff's De uh, Office bomb squad was called to the Fort Ripley property at 10.12 p.m. Saturday on the 3700 block of Bidol Road for the inert military round. And it's not the first time that <laughs> something from Camp Ripley was located where it didn't belong. It wasn't that long ago that uh, a barn was hit by uh, a missile or something. Mm -hmm. I remember reading about that sometime back. How big is is the camp? I mean, I don't know if you know this off the cuff, but it's a it's a very very large uh, complex. Eight hundred and fifty three acres. There you go. She knows. <laughs> eight hundred fifty three. Surely, in eight hundred fifty three acres, you can find a way to train without any of your uh, your munitions wandering off the And that doesn't include the A Cub acres. Those acres that are held by private individuals who own the farms or the forest that surround Camp Ripley who have given a sort of waiver that they won't uh, build on that property or do any of the things that they can't in order to get government money to have their property subsidized so that Camp Ripley can sort of mission creep out further um, and there, and and as much as possible, Camp Ripley is trying to buy up as many properties as they can surrounding Camp Ripley, because of Mission Creek. They want to expand. Yeah. It's ever expanding. Yeah, they have a pretty good deal going there. They're they're uh, one of the few bases in the United States that has drone training. Am I correct? 
Well, um, I, I don't know the stats on that. There okay. are many who, who do drone training. But in this Midwest, the entire Midwest area, Camp Ripley is the largest live fire bombing military training base Dang. of everything. I knew Law there was enforcement training, relative involved. Uh, and all of it. It's the largest training base for all the things important for the military to do, but also majority of what the uh, what our cops do state troopers sheriff's department deputies they have training programs out there for for our cops don't they oh yeah for police they, they train just, alongside soldiers so they're learning for, riot control and crowd control from oh, the military we're going to get into exactly what all they're training out there good i want to talk about that yeah but before we go there i just want to mention something else that really makes my blood boil and that is um, that the city of Belle Plaine, uh, yes, whose city attorney is Bob Vos, he might have even been their city administrator, I'm not sure, I can't remember, but he was one of the two, and I don't know if he still is, but he used to be. And Bob Vos is the guy, the attorney, who is now representing this city of Little Falls in our cable franchise negotiations with new charter or spectrum okay okay now in that he's connected to the city of Belle Plaine in part this is important uh, because of the location um, Minnesota City eliminates free speech zone at Veterans Park blocking satanic monument so I'm just gonna read this quick little article here so that the public will know first of all Veterans Memorial Parks are owned by cities or counties or state governments so to honor veterans, okay? It's always city money involved, always on city-owned property, unless they do, they pull a funny doodle like they did out in Long Prairie, and I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but it's funded by public dollars. And there is this thing in this nation under the constitution called separation of church and state supposed to be at a number of throughout the entire nation a number of different veterans parks there have been crosses or a soldier kneeling in front of a cross which absolutely violates the first amendment um, and, and the uh, and, and it actually uh, violates the establishment clause that establishes church and state have to be separate right. okay so in Blaine at Bl Bell Plain, rather, uh, somebody with a veterans group, I'm not sure, a private individual maybe, inst uh, was able to install what they call Soldier Joe monument of a soldier kneeling in front of a cross. And it was there for a long time until a brave woman complained to their Freedom From Religion organization who told them, the city of Blaine that is, that you can't Bell do Plain. that. Bell Plain now. Yeah. What did I say? <laughs> Use it, Blaine. Oh, sorry. It's a gold plane. Okay. And so I'm just going to read this so you can understand. Recently, um, they established these free speech zones because Joe had to get removed from the park. The soldier kneeling behind the cross. Because, because this woman complained that it was... It was to uh, freedom from religion. Right. And so the city had a choice, get sued or remove that cross from city-owned property. So and then they do? And then the people of that area got all up in arms, overloaded the city council chambers, came in and were all had their panties in a bunch, saying that they wanted Joe reinstalled. Yeah. So the city council decided to do this really stupid thing called create a um, free speech zone. Well, free speech is should be zenith at city hall or on city property. That's really important that it is there. Um, and they created this little free speech zone so that anybody that wanted to could also honor uh, people who had served that were, say, a Buddhist or an atheist or, God forbid, a Satanist. And in the process, the atheist organization, uh, and now I should say a Satanist organization, uh, and it'll identify it in here, decided to create a monument, spent $1,000 to create it, of uh, representing the Satanists, and they were about to install it on the Belle Plaine Veterans Memorial Park 
when the city council decided to eliminate that free speech zone just in time so they didn't have to tolerate Satanist monument coming in. So there is not there is nowhere nationally, to our knowledge, a Satanist uh, <clears throat> monument dedicated to Satanist veterans. Right, and, and there isn't any kind of satanic representation on any property that's owned by the state or city government at all, anywhere. This would have been the first time that atheists and Satanists would have had this kind of representation, and right. they should have gotten it. It was absolutely wrong for the city council of Belle Plaine to do this, <coughs> just to keep that particular form of free speech out, yeah. but allow Joe to be there in this interim time for a couple of months while they were bantering about all this. Okay, so the city of Blaine, Belle Plaine, Minnesota, <coughs> ended months of debate Monday by eliminating a free speech zone at Veterans Memorial Park, and this is dated Thursday, July 20th, 2017. So this just happened recently. Right. Uh, eliminating free speech zone at Veterans Memorial Park, blocking a proposed Satanist monument and forcing other religious displays to be removed. The original intent of providing the public space was to recognize those who have bravely contributed toward defending our nation through their military service. City leaders said in a statement, in recent weeks and months though, the intent has been overshadowed by freedom of speech concerns expressed by both religious and non-religious communities. The controversy started in January when the city ordered a Christian-themed statue of a praying soldier to be removed from the city-owned park. Fearing a lawsuit from the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the order was met with local backlash and the Belle Plaine City Council passed a resolution in February designating a free speech zone at the park. That opened the door, however, to all speech. Oh, no, it didn't, because they shut it down before all speech could come in there. That's my argument to mm -hmm. this. And an application from the Satan, Satanic Temple of Salem, Massachusetts, to erect a Satanic monument at the park renewed tensions. Uh, Monday's vote by the City Council rescinds the free speech resolution and blocks the Satanic display from ever going up, a local NBC affiliate reported. The debate between those communities has drawn significant regional and national attention to our city and has promote, promoted divisiveness among our own residents. <laughs> the city statement said, while this debate has a, has a place in public dialogue, I would say it does, it's talking about the, our constitution for heaven's sakes, it has detracted from our city's original intent of designating a space solely for the purpose of honoring and memorializing military veterans and has also also portrayed our city in a negative light. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's shown everybody, it's shown the world how stupid their residents are that have no knowledge of the Constitution exactly. whatsoever. Or don't care. Or don't care. I think that's it. I think they right. understand the principle. It's pretty simple. Right. right. If you they can put up a cross, you can put up a, a satanic piece. But it, it, it's the same as here. When I had my veterans, uh, my display over at Veterans Memorial Park on city-owned property, the, the city threw a fit, and so did the community. Yeah. You know, it's they don't want to hear things they don't want to hear, like the truth about what our military is doing and so on. Right. Our illicit, illegal wars, our unconstitutional aggressions on other nations, and people that happen to be brown, mostly. Mm -hmm. And it concludes with, owners of all publicly owned displays in Veterans Park were given 10 days to remove them from the property. Now this is wrong for a number of reasons. First of all, Joe, the spraying soldier, was allowed to be there for months. Right. They should at least give that satanic symbol the same amount of time to be in that park. <clears throat> it's wrong for the city to do that. And if I were the Satanist, I think I'd sue. They may. Yeah, and they may. <laughs> one, one can only hope. Right. Because nobody is going to obey the Constitution unless you take them to court over it. Right. We've, we've found that to be true in Little Falls. It seems to be true elsewhere. And now, well. this is kind of along the same lines and applies. Uh... I'll read this first. This is something that my former attorney, Larry Frost, wrote recently as a pushback to one really stupid commenter on my blog. Uh, he wrote, after hours, and that there's more to it than this. He, he really uh, challenged this woman to, uh, uh, he says, LFCC, that's the 
title that she went under the false name because she wasn't brave enough to come out and use her real name to associate her real name with her own free speech. He writes, LFCC does not understand what ordered liberty or a society of laws, not men, even means. For God's sake, LFCC, go back to fifth grade and take fifth grade civics. Do you really not understand what the city code says? And, and then it goes on to a whole bunch of stuff. It says, one of the bedrock principles of ordered liberty is that the many can only very rarely inflict costs on the few for the benefit of all. And he, he also says, in, toward the middle of this, um, after hours of taking the depositions at your city council, I left shaken and astonished at the total lack of concern or even awareness of the meaning of our Constitution by most members of the then city council. And what's important to note is that a number of those council members are still on city council. One of them is Greg Zilka, who's been elevated to the position of mayor. Yeah. Frank Goshek. <coughs> Jeremy the, Hanfler. The, the brother of the former mayor, Kathy Van Risingham. Frank Goshek is still on. Jeremy Hanfler has been elevated to the president of the city council. And the other one that's still on is... Help me out here. I'm trying. I'm trying to see them in my mind. <laughs> well, I'll think of it. Who's left? Well, we for new ones, we got Leif Hansen. He wasn't deposed. Raquel. Raquel Lundberg is new. Brad Hercock is new. Oh, the other one that's not uh, with us anymore is uh, Brian. Oh, Brian. Brian, sure. Crowder. Brian Crowder. And, of course, Frost was not talking about it. Frost acknowledged that Brian knew about the Constitution and then so. Here's the thing about the Constitution that I don't think most people understand. The Constitution is a hot potato. It's a radical document. The people who established this country wrote the Constitution and the and 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 the preamble to the Constitution and were trying to work out how this democracy business was going to go because it was brand new. They wrote a document that on its face upsets the whole established order of the world so far up to that time. Now there are people who think that the Constitution is their own private little guarantee that they can always have Main Street America exactly the way they want it. And um, in fact, if you read the Constitution, you'll find out that it supports the rebels, yes, not the establishment. It's about protecting the people who want to move forward and take care of um, others and 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 um, basically make this a more livable world, not the ones who want to stop everybody from changing anything so that they can enjoy their years in the recliner and you know God bless America. So that's what we have to remember about the Constitution, and I think sometimes we just fail to see that, especially the people who find it more comfortable to live in a really conservative, very restricted uh, kind of life. Thank you, I just have to read And along those lines, I want to read, I may have already read this on a program a while back, but it's worth reading again. This was from a an anonymous commenter on the Morrison County uh, Record website who is responding to a jab against me. Um, they say, quote from the film, The American President, you want free speech? Let's see you acknowledge a man whose words make your blood boil. Who is standing center stage advocating at the top of his lungs that which you would spend a lifetime opposing at the top of yours. You want to claim this land is the land of the free? Then the symbol of your country can't just be the flag. The symbol also has to be one of its citizens exercising the right to burn that flag in protest. Show me that. Defend that. Celebrate that in your classrooms. Then you can stand up and sing about the land of the free. I have no patience for Americans who claim to defend freedom and then strip the very rights and freedoms they claim to have fought for. Or those individuals who say they love America but clearly can't stand Americans. Power to the people. <laughs> and there's something here I want to read about uh, 
a response that I wrote to Ron Krish and Paul Gazelka. But we're running out of time. We're about halfway through the show. If I have time at the end, Teresa, I'll put it right here. Okay. Remind me to talk about this because it's important to do with foster children and what both Ron Krisha and Paul Gazelka have done by cutting the funds uh, for the most vulnerable kids of all, and those are the kids stuck in our broken foster care system. I want to read this response or, <clears throat> that I wrote to them, and of course they didn't write back. They never do. But... We're, we need to get into exactly what training is done at Camp Ripley um, so that the public is aware that this same training that soldiers train on, our cops are training on, and will be in time and already has been used to turn on its own people. The citizens of the United States, the citizens of Little Falls, the citizens of Morrison County, the citizens of Ramsey County, the citizens of Hennepin County, and out in the Dakotas, mm -hmm. and all throughout this nation, wherever rights are being violated, wherever protests are being stifled, wherever free speech is being stifled, wherever um, the police are being used as <coughs> simply an enforcement tool instead of a serve and protect tool. Right. So where you can find this information, and you can research, it's online, is the Camp Ripley Training Center's 2013 Range Operations. The Warrior's Choice. So it's the 2003 range regulations, basically. Okay. From that, on page 42, is a chapter called, Chapter 14, Non-Lethal Weapons. Definition of that is, Department of Defense Directive defines non-lethal weapons as weapons that are explicitly designed and primarily employed so as to incapacitate personnel or material while minimizing fatalities. Oh, wait a minute. I thought they said it was non-lethal. <laughs> minimizing <coughs> fatalities, permanent injury to personnel, and undesired dam damage to property and the environment. Furthermore, unlike conventional lethal weapons that destroy their targets principally through blast, penetration, and fragmentation, Non-lethal weapons employ means other than gross physical destruction to prevent the target from functioning. Non-lethal weapons are intended to have relatively reverse, reversible effects on personnel and material. Relatively. <coughs> so no, does, it, yeah. does it describe or does it list what those weapons are? Oh yeah. Okay. It says... In item number 14.2.3, the Inner Service Non-Lethal Individual Weapons Instructors course is the only course in the Department of Defense, that's folks, the entire Department of Defense, not just Camp Ripley, not just Minnesota, the entire DOD, that is certified to produce instructors who will train individuals in the proper employment of non-lethal weaponry. That's really important. That means Camp Ripley is the big guns trainer of all of the instructors who then go out and instruct on how to use these non-lethal weapons. In crowd control. In That's riot control yeah. and crowd control, correct. Item number 14.2.6 under safety considerations. Mm -hmm. Item number A says less lethal weapons are non-lethal by design and intent only. Failure to adhere to the minimum safe distance, MSD, will result in serious bodily injury or, and it's all capital letters, folks, death, with an exclamation at the end of it. So this means that if you fire a beanbag right in somebody's face, you could really severely damage and possibly kill them. Rubber bullets are only non-lethal from a particular distance. Get up close enough and you can penetrate with a rubber bullet. So that's what this is about. So... Item number G says the LRAD, and we'll get into what that is in a minute. It's used at most uh, protests in Minnesota here and at the Dakota uh, Pipeline protest. Mm -hmm. Standing Rock. And at the Republican National Convention protest. It's readily used, okay, and they train on that out at Ripley. LRAD. Uh, the LRAD must be approved through range control, NLT, 90 days prior to us. Authorized weapons, okay? Authorized weapons listed here are 
M320 